weeks pass by, we look back at the tragic Robb Elementary School shooting, which claimed the lives of 19 elementary students, including two teachers, leaving behind the Uvalde community to simply ask, why? My niece died. I have a six-year-old that just told me, I don't want to go to school. Why? To be shot? We want answers to where the security is going to take place. On May 24th, a gunman entered Robb Elementary armed with an assault rifle and began firing inside the school. The chaos ensued for 77 minutes before officers killed the shooter. According to the Texas Tribune, the shooter purchased two AR platform rifles just a day after his 18th birthday. Now the families and mourners all across the community and nation visit the memorial site at Robb Elementary. Gun violence has run rampant in the U.S., as CNN reports that 246 mass shootings have occurred just in 2022. Ten mass shootings occurred in just one weekend since the Robb Elementary shooting. GSU President Dr. Cheryl Green said in a statement, quote, For the families who lost loved ones in New York, California, and now Texas, we express our condolences, and our hearts go out to all of those who were affected by these heinous acts of violence. The House voted on Wednesday, June 8th, to pass the Protect Our Kids Act, which will raise the legal age to buy a semi-automatic rifle from 18 to 21. On this vote, the yeas are 223, the nays are 204, the bill is passed. There's a sense of urgency here. There is a national momentum because of the mass shootings that we've had in the last several weeks, a political momentum, which is rare, you can feel it on Capitol Hill. Senator Chris Murphy is determined to bring a change to gun laws in the U.S. I'm more confident than ever that we're going to get there, but I'm also um, more anxious about failure this time around. Although the House passed the Protect Our Kids Act, it's unlikely that the legislation will move in the Senate. Still, our hearts remain with all of those affected by gun violence. That's why I'm so grateful that y'all have made your way to Uvalde and prayed with our little town, our little community here because um, there's so many broken hearts and we need to come together and it's just so powerful. This is Dante Corona reporting for GSU TV. Unfortunately, the death of the suspect, but that's the safest alternative to keep that threat out of that school. In Alabama on June 9th, Robert Tyler White tried to intrude on Walnut Park Elementary School leading to his death. Police received reports from locals, a suspicious man trying to open several doors to the building and attempting to get into vehicles in the parking lot. These reports were passed on to the school's resource officer. Once the suspect was spotted, a fight broke out and White attempted to grab the police officer's firearm. When backup arrived, White was shot and died on scene. Superintendent Tony Reddick talks about how this incident could have been similar to the outcome in Texas. We understood that in the Uvalde situation, that very unfortunate situation, uh, that particular gunman uh, was able to get into an unlocked door, so our doors remain locked. In the end, 34 children were unharmed. I am Claude T. Martinez reporting for GSU TV. On June 8th, five Marines were killed in a plane crash in the remote California desert. On the training mission, the MV-22 Osprey crash happened at 12.25 p.m. The Osprey is a hybrid plane and helicopter that has been criticized for its safety record. It can take off and land like a helicopter, but can transit as a turboprop aircraft. The internet was worried about what cargo could be aboard. Contrary to social media rumors, there is no nuclear material aboard the aircraft, and we'll get you more information as we can. West Sacramento Mayor Martha Garano talked about losing a Marine in her local community. The Marines who were training um, are heroes. They were trying to protect our country. After the next akin were notified, a memorial service was held at a Sacramento minor league baseball game before the first pitch. The five killed Marines were Captain John Sachs, Captain Nicholas Losapio, Corporal Nathan Carlson, Corporal Seth Rasmussen, and Lance Corporal Evan Strickland. I am Claude T. Martinez reporting for GSU TV. Since 11 o'clock we've been here. And then... I confess I haven't. <laughs> Just as I saw 4 o'clock in the morning count. The Platinum Jubilee for Queen Elizabeth II was held on the first weekend in June. This marks Queen Elizabeth's 70th year as Queen of the Commonwealth Countries. The longest ruling British monarch started the weekend with the Trooping of Color military parade. The Queen is greeted by a royal salute and carries out an inspection of the troops. The foot guards and the household cavalry then march past Her Majesty. With her being 96 years old, she missed the Thanksgiving church service 
due to discomfort from Thursday trooping of the color. This did not stop the public enjoyment of the royal family making their appearances. When it comes to how to mark 70 years as your queen, there is no guidebook to follow. It really is a first. But I have been humbled and deeply touched that so many people have taken to the streets to celebrate my platinum jubilee. I am Claude T. Martinez reporting for GSU TV. The baby formula shortage is on the rise. In the United States, over 70% of formulas are out of stock. In early May, two infants died from an infection. The FDA recalled several brands of formula after a Michigan plant found pathogens in its product leading to an investigation. The FDA's timeliness of interviewing the whistleblower and getting into the facility for a four-cause inspection were too slow, and some decisions in retrospect could have been more optimal. This adds more pressure to the Food and Drug Administration because they have harsh regulations on international baby formulas. Switzerland was able to meet these requirements and sent a shipment to Indiana in late May. And what we're encouraging here, here at Riley Children's Health and then also nationally through the American Academy of Pediatrics is to reach out and connect with pediatricians and, and with the other you know, infrastructure we have through WIC offices. Although it's going to take some time to get us back up to where we need to have that availability. Um, what I saw today and what has been expressed to us is that this is the first shipment of several to help us bridge that gap. FDA Commissioner Robert Califf stated at the Senate Health Committee that it's going to be a gradual improvement up to probably somewhere around two months until the shelves are repleted again. I am Claude T. Martinez reporting for GSU TV. Welcome to GSU TV, where today we are talking about Juneteenth. Governor State had a Juneteenth celebration this past Saturday, and it was an absolute blast. Everybody came out to support, not to mention the talent they came out. The Acme MB Church Gospel Choir came, and they put on an absolute show. The choir did amazing as they sang for multiple staff members and students that came to the party. Governor's Day also had an art gallery you can go to after hearing the choir sing. The art is made by fellow Governor State University students as they are displaying their appreciation for Juneteenth. The display of their work is second to none and their art speaks for itself as it has meaning to the day. <laughs> also invited the Illinois Philharmonic Orchestra Quintet to celebrate Juneteenth. They played the Black National Anthem to show representation of the African American community. This event has been a blast and everybody who came will make this memorabilia. This is John Raphael Jr. reporting for GSU TV. Have you ever considered a career in physical therapy? Physical therapy is one of the fastest growing occupations in the U.S. A career in physical therapy is often very exciting and rewarding. If you are looking to earn your doctorate in physical therapy, then look no further than Governor State. I spoke to the chairman of the PT program, Dr. David Deers, to get additional information on the program. Uh, to get into GSU's PT program, you need to have a bachelor's degree. And then there's a group of, I think, like 17 or 18 prerequisite courses that you uh, also had to have taken, and then take the GRE. And then you can come, you know, apply to the program. Each year we take somewhere between 30 and 35. We usually average about 32 students a year that start in the program. Physical therapy programs are very difficult to get into. There's currently only uh, six in the state of Illinois. Um, our kind of special niche in the world of uh, physical therapy, especially in Illinois, is in the south suburbs. We're the only uh, state school in the south region that has a uh, physical therapy program. Well, the benefits of physical therapy is you're guaranteed a job. <laughs> right now, uh, people are really, really looking for physical therapists. There are some clinics out there that are offering twenty dollars to $30,000 sign-on bonuses. Um, just for the pure employment aspect. But when you start getting into the uh, medical field, you know, it's a very re rewarding field. 
you're actually working with the patients on usually two to three times a week basis. So you have your hands on the patients actually helping them achieve their goals. One of the most important things is we really work with students to get through the program. Uh, for our accreditation, they have a minimum of an 80% graduation rate, which I think is atrocious personally, only graduating 80% of your students. So when we bring students in, we bring them in with the goal of getting them through the program. Our, our graduation rate is up near 99%. I think our program kind of sets itself apart as far as how well we're, we're willing to work with uh, the students. For more information on the physical therapy program, you can email Dr. Deers or visit GSU's website at govst.edu. This is Dante Corona reporting for GSU TV. If you are attending community college in the Chicagoland area and plan to seek a bachelor's degree after graduation, then you may be eligible for the dual degree program. Governor State University has partnered with multiple community colleges to assist students in earning quality and affordable associate and bachelor's degrees. So the dual degree program is a partnership with 17 community colleges in the Chicagoland area that allows students to be involved in Governor State early in their experience while completing their associate's degree, have a seamless transfer over to Governor State, and finish the bachelor's degree in the shortest amount of time possible. So with the dual degree program, joining the earlier the better, because you do lock in Governor State's tuition rate at the time of joining DDP. Uh, and then also we waive your application fee, we have guaranteed admissions to Governor State, and also have the opportunity to uh, compete for exclusive scholarships that are only available to dual degree program students. We have a GSU Promise Scholarship for students who are typically Pell eligible and have at least a 2.75 GPA. And then also the DDP Honors Scholarship for students with a 3.5 and have been members of their community college honors program or members of Phi Theta Kappa. Uh, it's a two-year scholarship, covers full tuition and fees here at Governor State. The dual degree program locks in tuition at GSU and offers even more help to students. A couple other benefits for the dual degree program is students are assigned a designated transfer specialist to assist in their academic advising prior to coming to Governor State to make sure each of their credits will transfer and they're graduating in the shortest amount of terms possible. And also throughout that experience, students are invited to different social engagements, honorary courting ceremonies to acknowledge the completion of those two degrees and are just part of the GSU family throughout that entire process easy to sign up and it's free <laughs> so all you have to do is go online and complete our dual degree program enrollment form which is on uh, off of our, our website you're able to link that from our website complete that form attach on official transcripts if you're able we approve it at our end to verify that students are definitely enrolled at their community college and then you're in Prairie State College student Manuel Reza uh, started as a transfer student, uh, came over here to Governor State through the dual degree program. When he finished, he graduated early with his bachelor's degree and then became actually our graduate assistant within the program and continues to work with us now and is now graduating with his master's and moving on to a doctoral program this fall. So, as you search for your next university, don't forget about the dual degree program at GSU. So it's, uh, again, it's family. And once you're part of DDP, we try to make sure that you go beyond the dual degrees. This is Dante Corona reporting for GSU TV. Welcome to GSU TV, where today we'll be talking about the gaming league and also the gaming tournament that GSU just had this past week and we will get a deeper dive into how they got this thing rolling. We're here with Gamers Unite, um, Sina with the Center for Student Engagement and Intercultural Programs was kind enough to help set this up. Um, I'm here hoping to gain interest in the gaming club so that, you know, post pandemic, we can get some interaction with students uh, who enjoy gaming. So anyone who's interested in either online gaming like League of Legends, Rocket League, or in person, uh, you know, console gaming, we'd love to do that. And so we're just kind of having pizza, having a nice time playing Mortal Kombat and then um, Mario Kart, as well as uh, Super Smash. So it's a nice time. We were looking for events for the Spring Fest, right? And I thought this would be a great event. I mean, I'd spoken with um, Edson, the, the student um, athlete, the student at the uh, center, right? And we're just looking for how best to, you know, involve students, you know, due to the pandemic, a lot of, activities have kind of like just died down so just looking for how best we can involve students on campus and he told me that a lot of students like to play games so I was like okay fine yeah let's let's do it and then 
So we brought together, I mean, a SAC Student Activities Council, and then we brought the gaming department, the gaming club, because we already have a student gaming club. Uh, we brought them in, and then I had Edson bring in like the student athletes as well. So just again, it's just trying to revive the gaming community, and then make sure students have fun and feel part of campus, and just build that sort of a uh, jago pride in students. The gaming league was a success, and everybody had fun. I also hopped on the sticks myself and had a blast too. This is John Redfield, and thank you for watching GSU TV. Beyond Conversation, Red Summer had a preview event and an open discussion about the 1919 race riots in Chicago. Kicking off the event was the short segment of the play, Red Summer, created by Shepsu Aku and Andrew White. Center for Performing Arts visitors saw a glimpse of the events before the rioting. The racial tensions in Chicago intensified during the Great Migration and Eugene Williams fell victim. On July 27, 1919, Eugene was struck in the head by a rock and drowned in Lake Michigan. This is because of the Invisible Line. Racial groups in Chicago identified the Invisible Line by seeing the opposite race and if they crossed, they would be subject to being attacked. George Starber was the perpetrator killing Eugene with a rock, but Starber dodged charges. What followed next was eight days of rioting causing 38 deaths and 500 injuries. Political science major Chastity Simeon discussed her findings about Red Summer. One takeaway that I know now is the incident of the beach where Eugene has, like, was an individual that was killed during this period based off the invisible line. And it was kind of breathtaking and actually emotional, tragic um, experience. Simeon adds her thoughts on how we can be a better community to others. Just speak to someone different from you. Literally be open and optimistic to change and to diversity because it's important for us to learn a different perspective and livelihood of a different individual other than ourselves or our cultural backgrounds. Principal and editorial director Walter M. Perkins talked about the importance of knowing your history. Our young people need to be more connected uh, to their history. It gives them a better sense of who they are, what their ancestors have done, and just the whole richness uh, that they come out of. It's not being done with those discussions are not happening often enough within families. Mr. Perkins also shares how the older generation can better inform young people share a book that you've read uh, and, and give it to somebody and, and then after they've read it, talk to them about it. A couple of times uh, during the program today, the word context was used. And our young people, they don't have any context. Uh, they mostly deal with their own peers and they don't have any uh, much in the way of top-down uh, information in terms of how things really are and when things happen to them, how to evaluate uh, those things in terms of their lives. Actresses Lauren Wellsman and Chloe Belangelo explained the importance of telling the Red Summer story to the public. Even though it's, it's a dark story to tell, um, it's still fun. And so with the fun, there's uh, humanness that comes with the characters as well. Mm -hmm. And so seeing themselves in a way, um, so I think that's important. I know for myself, I didn't even know that this happened until in the last few years. These sort of stories are important, and I think being able to see it in a way that's theatrical, that's fun, that you can sing and dance, kind of eases the trauma of it all. I think it definitely teaches us that two things can be true at once. Something can be hopeful and tragic at the same time, and I think we all felt that the first time we did a cast reading of the show and we said those words out loud. To see the full premiere production of Red Summer, be sure to save the date, which will be held the third and fourth weekend at the CPA in September. For more information about Red Summer, please visit govst.edu slash redsummer. Thank you for watching. This is Claude T. Martinez for GSU TV. Hello, I'm Eric Meekins from GSU TV, and I'm covering a leadership series presented by Governor State University. Policymakers, private sector leaders, and stakeholders gather here together to share ideas, discuss opportunities, point out challenges, and offer solutions to the new emerging industry of electric vehicles in Illinois. Really think you need to set out that vision first and foremost.
foremost, and then deliver on, on that piece. Um, third, I think to me, the part, the part of this is, is the workforce, right? I think our people are our strongest asset in, in Illinois, uh, and we're really focused on preparing our workforce for these jobs in the green economy and focusing on equity, making sure that it's accessible to all Illinois is really critical to the work that we're doing. And then fourth, leveraging that existing asset, this is existing asset and infrastructure uh, that Dan really hit, hit home. There's so many things that are great about Illinois, and we want to make sure the world knows that Illinois has that infrastructure, and we continue to invest in it through capital investments, workforce investments, and just making sure that the people and infrastructure of Illinois after the event, I had the privilege to speak to Rick Bryant, the senior advisor of Congresswoman Robin Kelly. What was the immediate benefits that you seen moving to an electric vehicle? Well, the most immediate benefit of electric vehicle is to uh, clean our environment, to uh, get rid of fossil fuel burning cars, replace it with cleaner cars. You know, electric cars aren't completely clean, but they are. They, they will decarbonize our air. It'll reduce global warming, climate change. Well, it's the biggest emitter of dangerous greenhouse gases are is the automobile, automobile and vehicles. So if we can clean up those, we can clean up our uh, environment. We can, clean, we can reduce some of the severe weather impacts we have around the world. So that's the biggest advantage of electric cars. The secondary advantage is it's going to... Uh, welcome in a, an entire new industry. I mean, there will be economic opportunities for uh, producing batteries, for uh, microchip production, um, innovation, manufacturing, all, all kinds of new things. It, it will create a, a new paradigm in, in the uh, world economy, really. Um, a new industry, so you got the economic benefits of new opportunities for jobs, in new fields, and then of course the overriding benefit is just the environment. We're cleaning up the environment, doing something good for the environment. Um, and quite frankly, I own an electric vehicle, and uh, it's the most fun car you'll ever drive. I mean, they're really sh they're smart, they're efficient, they're fun, quick. Um, so you know, even if even if people don't believe in global warming, they should buy an electric car because it's. It, you'll experience something that's very enjoyable and, you know, the side impact is creating jobs and cleaning the environment. This is Eric Weekens from GSU TV. Thanks for watching. Welcome to GSU TV, where today we'll be talking about the civil service event GSU just had to show appreciation to the staff in different departments and to let them know why they are the reason that Governor State is one of the best campuses in Chicago's South Suburban area. So normally we have our civil service day in January, but we decided to have it a little bit earlier because we've been in the pandemic and having not had gotten a chance to come together, we thought it would be a good opportunity and take this advantage to bring everyone back together so we can fellowship the importance of celebrating our civil service staff here on campus. It was a committee of us that got together, a team of us that got together and planned the event all to make everything happen. So it isn't a one man show, but I'm happy to be a product of a team that made it all come together so we can appreciate and celebrate our civil service staff here on campus. And my role was just basically just helping it all come together. Um, I was just one of the entities that allowed it, that made it possible. So I just kind of jumped in wherever was necessary. Um, I helped with our, our chairperson to make it all come together. But again, it was a team for us to do it. This day is about honoring the people who are the wind beneath our wings. I can't do it. We can't do it without all of you. This is an annual event that GSU throws to show appreciation to the staff. The games that were played and the prizes that were won by staff members will of course be memorabilia. This is John Redford Jr. reporting for GSU TV. April Showers brings May Flowers as a fundraiser to support faculty by giving back to those who help craft student skills while at GSU. We're selling carnations um, for graduating students or maybe a student wants to buy a graduation flower. 
uh, for a professor or part of any part of faculty that made a difference in their overall time here. And um, we have stickers, markers. With the purchase of any uh, carnation bouquet, you're able to make a card for that person and just really let them know whatever it is you want them to know. The proceeds of the event are going to be sent not only to the GSU Psychology Club, but back to others. So it actually is going to Psychology Club just so we could fund some of the events that we had throughout the semester that you know really do enhance the student student life here. So for instance, we had our slice and grad advice events. So that's where we grabbed eight to ten graduate students of all different programs and they were able to, you know, give tips, advice from, you know, the grad application process all the way up to self care tips, you know, to undergraduate students and, you know, any other questions that they had. We also did blankets for animals because you know they were pretty they were hit pretty bad during covid that's where our proceeds will be going to you know to just enhance not only student life but also get back to the community as a whole one of the creative events held by psychology club was a movie night where students learned the deeper meaning of a film we had a pg and movie night event where um, we watched a psychological thriller and um, we discussed, you know, some of the psychological aspects of the movie and we enjoyed some pizza and just overall getting to know our GSU um, Psychology Club members. And we also had people that weren't in the club there, so it was great to get to know everybody. Being a part of this club does not need a long-term commitment. It is available for all students interested in the psyche of the mind. So what I do love about Psychology Club is you do not have to be a psychology major. It's just if you have an interest in it, you can automatically join. And, you know, it, just being a leader and just overall really giving back to the community, that's what I feel like we're all about. And it's such, like you said, we're not only looking for members, but we're looking for leaders. So maybe if you see, if you want to do an event that's different in the school, then you know, feel free to become a leader and that will definitely enhance not just your leadership skills, you know, learning how to do fundraising, learning how to plan an event, but to overall just get back. For more information regarding GSU Psychology Club, please visit govst.campuslabs.com slash engage, then type in Psychology Club. I am Claude T. Martinez reporting for GSU TV. Welcome to GSU TV, where today we'll be talking about one of the newest and hottest spots in Chicagoland's South Suburban Area, MVP Studio and Spa. MVP Studio and Spa is located in Lansing, Illinois. They are open Tuesday through Saturday, and the experience that customers will have here are second to none. MVP Studio and Spa opened the fall of 2021. My vision as the owner was to create a one-stop shop for guests to come in and enjoy personal care services. As a licensed esthetician, I offer facials, lash extension, waxing services, and much more. When you come to MVP Studio and Spa, you're not just receiving a service, you're getting an experience. Here at MVP Studio and Spa, we offer a luxury, warm, and relaxing experience. We cater to all of your self-care needs. I am the licensed nail technician here at MVP Studio and Spa. I specialize in healthy nails and foot care. Not only will you leave here with beautiful nails, but healthy nails. We welcome you to come visit us here. If you book with me, you will leave with an experience second to none. MVP Studio and Spa has the most upscale customer service in Chicago's South Suburban area. They also have a website you can go to where you can book appointments, request specific stylists, and also buy the product that they use. They also have a Facebook and Instagram page at MVP Studio and Spa. This is John Redford Jr. reporting for GSU TV.